plants photosynthesize and they feed us, you know, they keep us alive and it reminds us where our life comes from. Our life doesn't come from the grocery store. Our life no. comes out of the earth. And out of that came a sense of what a garden actually meant, that a garden is a form of justice, it's a form of health. Um, people who've been uprooted from their um, native culture, whether they're Native Americans, African Americans, or immigrants, in one way or another, they've all been pulled away from their native culture. Creating a garden and sustaining the foods that were passed down to generations from their ancestors is a way of holding on to some core sense of who they are as a people. And so there's this very beautiful, deep meaning in these gardens. And I asked myself, why has American garden literature been created to have no history in it and no politics? And also most gardening books, even now that everybody's trying to get on the food bandwagon and write about all these different cultures, they very rarely actually talk to these people. So I vowed that I would go out and record the voices of as many ethnic growers as I could. transcribed every word of every tape and then I built stories around them. So as many ethnic what? Growers. Oh, okay. So the book begins on Tusuki Pueblo with one of the oldest, most conservative um, traditions of Native American gardening. And then it goes up to the Española Valley where I interview descendants of the conquistadors who've never lived further than five miles of where their ancestors settled in 1625. From there I go to the Sea Islands of South Carolina and interview Gullah elders who are direct descendants of African slaves whose gardens reflect not only their African-American heritage, that is the fusion of cultures under slavery, but also reach all the way back to Africa. I didn't know that. I knew none of this when I started. It was just a hunch. And then after that, I range all over the country talking to immigrants from Asia and Europe about the meaning of their gardens for preserving their cultural identity. And I discovered two things. Every single interview, at some point, one of the gardeners would say to me, you waste nothing. So in that sense, they're, by holding on to their heritage and refusing to assimilate fully to our mainstream values, they're pushing back against Americans' culture of waste and consumption. And also, because they've all experienced war or hunger or dislocation, they have this reverence for the land and an intimate tie to the land. And so they speak of the land as a relative as, and gardening as a form of kinship or adoption. It's really very beautiful. And I had never read anything before that recorded this, so that became the driving force of writing this book for me. We'd be tasting Parmigiano, Reggiano, we'd be tasting wine and bread, and then